What's up everyone? Thanks for tuning in and welcome back. I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and we are in the SwiftUI Advanced Learning Playlist. And in this video, we're gonna learn how to build custom shapes. And the reason I haven't covered this earlier is because by default, SwiftUI actually comes with a bunch of shapes out of the box. We get rectangles, rounded rectangles, circles, capsules, a couple other shapes as well. So a lot of times you don't really need to build your own custom shapes. But of course, as you start building really custom and unique UI designs, eventually you'll run into a point where you actually need a custom shape. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to build our own custom shapes. And we do that in Swift and Swift UI by actually drawing the shape from point to point on a path. So those of you who have followed my crypto course have actually already kind of done this when we built a chart in that course. We drew a path to create the line for that chart. So this actually works in a very, very similar way. We basically just draw that path and we create our custom shapes. I do wanna note that this video as well as the next two videos are all about custom shapes. So in this one, we're gonna draw custom shapes just using straight lines. In the next video, we're gonna do custom shapes with curved lines. And in the third video, we're gonna do custom shapes with custom animation as well. So a lot to cover here. This is just the first of three shape videos. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's jump into Xcode and get coding. All right, welcome back everyone. So I'm back in our Xcode project, of course. Let's right click the navigator, create a new file for this video. It's gonna be a Swift UI view and let's call this custom shapes bootcamp. Go ahead and click create, uh, click resume on the canvas. Let's get coding. And we're gonna create a very simple screen for this one. Let's do a Z stack here. On the Z stack, let's add a rectangle and let's give it a frame. Let's do a width of maybe 300, a height of 300. So we'll actually make a square here. And we now have a basic shape on the screen. So if you follow my bootcamp, we've already covered shapes. We have rectangles, we have rounded rectangles, we have capsules, we have circles. There's a whole bunch of different shapes and I highly advise using the built-in shapes whenever possible. But of course, not every shape comes by default in SwiftUI. So for example, uh, we don't have triangle as a shape in SwiftUI, but that might be something you wanna put into your app. So of course we could always take a rectangle or a square here and then call dot trim and maybe trim it from zero to 0 0.5. So we cut it in half. And now of course we have a triangle, but that's not you know, really exactly a triangle. And this could get kind of funky if we're trying to do some custom things with it. So really what we want is a custom shape, a custom triangle here. And triangle of course is not the only shape we're going to make, but it's a good easy one to start with. So instead of doing this trim on this rectangle, let's start by making a custom shape. So up here outside of the struct, I'm gonna create another struct and I'm gonna call this triangle and it's going to conform to shape and we'll open the brackets. So on rectangle, if I right click it and jump to the definition, we can see that rectangle is a struct that conforms to shape and every shape has a path in rect. So just like the rectangle in this triangle, in order to conform to shape, we're going to need uh, that same function. So here I can click fix, or I could have just started typing path, and we can get this function here to return a path. And those of you who followed the SwiftUI crypto course are a little bit familiar with this path in rect. Uh, that's because we actually used a custom path in order to draw the chart in that crypto course. So this is the same thing. Basically, we just need to draw the triangle. And we're given the rectangle, which is basically the frame of the object. And just to show you that real quick, I'm gonna comment this out. And if we put the trim back in here from zero to 0 0.5, and I resume the canvas, if I click on the rectangle, we can see that this, this blue outline here, this is the actual rectangle, the, the rect that is in the path. So this entire area, this entire blue area is the rect but the actual shape being drawn is just obviously the black area here. So we get the full rect and then we have to draw the shape inside that rectangle. I'm gonna delete this again and, and uncomment this out. 
So let's start with a path. We're gonna open the brackets and we're gonna say for path in. So if I type in path dot, I can see there's a bunch of completions here on how we wanna draw these lines. And we're gonna get into some of these more complex like quad curves in another video. But right now we're gonna focus on two of these, which is path.move and path.addline. So first, so the move one will move basically the cursor around anywhere inside the frame, but it won't draw a line as it moves to that. So it's kind of just moving the cursor. Whereas add line is going to find a point and draw a line from the current point to that next point. So subtle difference, and we're gonna start by actually moving to the top center of the rectangle here. So we need to add a CG point. So let's add CG point, open the parentheses. We're gonna use the X and the Y, and we need to find the exact top middle of the rectangle. So, so those of you who are familiar with the coordinate system know that point zero zero is actually the top left. It's not the bottom left, it's the top left on the iPhone. So first let's look at the x-axis and we want to go about halfway across the x-axis. So I'm going to call rect.midx. So min x would be here, mid x is right in the center, and then max x will of course be on the right side. And then for the y, min y is up here, mid y is down here, and then max y is on the bottom. So we actually want rect.mid min y. Now from this top point, I wanna draw a line from up here to the bottom right corner. So we're gonna add a line here to CG point, open the parentheses, and we're gonna use the X and Y. So the bottom right corner is going to be rect dot uh, max x and rect dot max y. So we've drawn a line so far from here to the bottom right. I don't think we can see it, but let's try by putting the triangle onto the screen. So instead of this rectangle, let's put a triangle. Let's resume the canvas. I don't think we're gonna be able to see it because it's so thin. It's just literally like a zero pixel line. Uh, but now what we're gonna do is move from the bottom right corner to the bottom left corner. So again, we're gonna add a line. So we're gonna go path.addLine, CG point, and the bottom left is going to be rect.minx uh, and rect.maxy. So now we're gonna see, we have started up here, we drew a line here, and then we drew a line down here. And because it's a shape, it is auto-filling in in between all of our lines. Now clearly we don't actually have to draw this final line back to the top point, but I like to, and I think it might help for like debugging purposes. Um, so we're gonna add one more path that add line and we're gonna go to CG point and we're gonna go back to the rect.midx and rect.miny. So it's the same CG point as the first one here. And now we have a perfect triangle shape on the screen. So if I stop running the simulator here and I click and put the cursor on this triangle, we can see the blue outline where the actual rectangle, the actual frame is. But then of course we can see the actual shape is being drawn inside that and we have a perfect triangle. And by conforming to shape, we actually get some extra benefits as well because now this triangle can do anything that any other shape can do. So for example, we can call dot fill and we can use maybe a linear gradient and I can put a gradient onto the triangle. So we have a custom gradient here and I'm not gonna go through all the different gradients. I did a whole video on that, but uh, basically we can customize this triangle the same way you can customize any other shape. I'm gonna comment this out and maybe we'll do another modifier. We can do trim from zero to 0 0.5 and now we have half of our triangle I'm gonna comment that out and we can also do dot stroke. We can add a stroke style, open the parentheses. I'm gonna use a line width of maybe three, line cap of, let's do round. Uh, I don't think we need line join or meter limit. We can give dash maybe five and then dash phase I don't think we need. So we could do like a stroke here and then we can call that foreground color of blue make it thicker. 
So now you can see we have this like dotted triangle. Obviously this is not a perfect format, but I just wanna show you that we can do all of these things that we can do to any other shape to our own custom shapes. One more cool thing I wanna point out with these custom shapes is uh, that we can use them as a clip shape for things like images. So I have an image on my desktop here and you can use any image on your desktop. Uh, I'm just gonna drag and drop an image. This one's called the rock. I'm gonna put uh, the image onto the screen here. So I'm gonna do uh, image and let's just call it the rock. I'm gonna comment out the triangle. So we'll keep this frame on the image here. Let's make it resizable and scaled to fill. Let's click resume just to get an image onto the screen here. And then I can call dot clip shape. And now just like with the circle or any other shape, I can call triangle and clip the image into a perfect triangle. Obviously it cuts the rock off a little bit here, but you do get the point of what I'm going for. And I think we could actually even maybe on this triangle, let's just call dot rotation and add an angle of 180 degrees. If we flip that triangle upside down and now we get a better, a better version for this picture. Uh, but I just wanted to show you guys that we can use these custom shapes to actually as clip shapes for images as well. Before we wrap up this video, let's build a couple other custom shapes. So I'm gonna comment some of this stuff back out. I'm gonna comment out, out the clip shape. I'm gonna comment out the image. Let's put the triangle, just the triangle back onto the screen. And up here, let's create another struct. Let's call this one diamond. It will be of type shape. Open the brackets. Every shape needs a path. So we're gonna have a path. Open the brackets for path in. And we're gonna start at the top center again. So I'm gonna just copy this. So let's start at the top center. Let's go to the middle right. So we're gonna say uh, path dot add a line to CG point. Let's do rect dot max X and rect dot mid Y. I'm then gonna go to the bottom. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this. So we have a line. We're gonna to go to the rect dot uh, mid x, so the middle of the bottom, and all the way at the bottom, so max y. I'm gonna copy it one more time. We're gonna to go to the min x, so all the way on the left side, and mid y. This one should be mid y here. And then finally, we're gonna go back up to the top, so we'll do path dot add line, cg point, it's gonna be that starting point, that rect.mid x and rect.min y. Let's put the diamond onto the screen. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna comment out the triangle and put in a diamond here. Let's see what it looks like. Click resume. And this looks a little bit funky. So, so let's move this max x in a little bit. So let's just up here say let, uh, horizontal offset of type CG float equals, let's do rect dot width times maybe 0 0.2. So 20%. So on this X, we're gonna do the full X minus the horizontal offset. So here we're gonna do max X minus horizontal offset. And then for this third point, we're gonna do min X plus horizontal offset. So that will give us a little bit more of a diamond shape. One more we're gonna do, let's call struct. Let's make a trapezoid and it will conform to shape. Open the brackets, open the brackets. We're gonna have a path for rect in. We're gonna do path, open the brackets, path in. And for this trapezoid, let's start by path.move to. And we wanna start at the top, so we're gonna do CG point, open the parentheses. Uh, the X is, for the X, it's actually going to be a little bit in as well. So we're gonna do another kind of horizontal offset. So I'm just gonna copy that one, paste it down here. So horizontal offset. So I'm gonna do uh, rect.min X plus horizontal offset. 
and the y is going to be rect.min y. So on this rectangle here, we're starting kind of up here on the top left, but not all the way on the edge, just right around here. And then we're gonna draw a line to the right side. So we're gonna do path.addLine, cg point, rect.maxx minus horizontal offset. And this of course will be the rect.min y as well. We're then gonna to go to the bottom right corner so let's do path dot add line cg point let's go rect dot max x rect dot max y we go to the bottom left so we're going to add one more line to the min x and the max y and then we're going to add one more line back to our starting point here so i'm just going to copy this cg point and make that the final one Let's put this trapezoid on the screen. Comment this out, trapezoid. Let's click resume, see what it looks like. It's gonna look a little ugly at first. Uh, but then if we just maybe change the height to 100, we now have a perfect trapezoid. So the shape is not perfect. You might not ever need a trapezoid in your actual app, but now you guys know how to actually draw and create custom shapes. And the really cool thing is that by conforming to shape, you can inherit everything a shape can do. So we can use the clip shape, we can use the fill, the trim, the stroke, uh, and we can get these shapes looking awesome. So that's it for this video. In this video, we only cover drawing straight lines. And that's because in the next video, we're going to specifically cover drawing curved lines because it's a little bit harder. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and leave a like and comment on this video. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.